This is a lecture on equations in spherical and cylindrical coordinates. In homework 1b, there were some questions. In fact, these were the questions. What are the shapes of the objects described by r equal 4 in cylindrical coordinates, or rho equals 4 in spherical, or theta equals pi over 4 in uh, cylindrical, or v equals pi over 4 in spherical coordinates? What kind of shapes do, um, do those describe? They look a little strange because if you've only thought about the coordinate system in terms of points, you recall that to specify a three, a point in a three-dimensional coordinate system, you need three values. So here you have, for example, the value for r. Well, what are the values for z and theta? You know, those aren't specified. The rule is, in an equation, say in spherical coordinates, any term that isn't specified, if you don't specify the phi or the theta and only the rho, then the non-specified coordinates can take on all values. So let's start with Cartesian coordinates. So here's the 3D um, Cartesian coordinate system. Of course, this idea holds through in, true in 2D as well. For example, say I just have a um, two-dimensional coordinate system. So here's an x and here's a y. If I have an equation, y equals, say, 6, that's an equation for a horizontal line through y equals 6, right? In other words, y is constrained to 6, but look at x. x takes on all values. And that's a line. Okay, the same holds in three-dimensional space, but you have to worry about a couple of, um, two other coordinates. So here's your uh, way to cite points in three-dimensional space. You need three coordinates. The point at minus 5, minus 5, and 7 is shown here. The x is minus 5, the y is minus 5, and the z is 7, and that all has to be specified. If you want to specify the point here, you can't just say 3 and 5, you know, the y has to be specified, and it's specified as 0. Of course, you have to do it in order, x, y, z. So if you wanted a point, for example, this point right here, lying on the x-axis in this coordinate system, that would be 5, 0, 0. Right? You do not just specify x equal 5. So for the point, you need to specify all three coordinates. Now, if you have an equation in which one of the coordinates is not specified, for example, if I say x equals 10, that means x is constrained to the value 10, but y can take on any value. So I'll try to, oh, that was wrong in this coordinate system. Here, x is 10, but y can have any value. So while y is sitting at 10, x can have any value like this, and also z can have any value. Well, that's not very straight. And what do I have? I will have, if I wrote all over this, okay, I could fill in all these values for y and z, and I would have a plane. This is an equation for a plane through the point x equal 10, because y is taking on all values, in this case along for z being 0, and here would be all the z values when y is 0, but then I could have all values out here of x and y as long as, I'm sorry, of y and z as long as x is 10. So in a Cartesian coordinate system, when one value is specified, that describes a plane through that to the point x equal 10, well it's not really a point, to the value x equal 10, in which y takes on all values and z takes on all values. So if you needed a plane up here, horizontal plane, a horizontal plane, z would be specified in this case at 10, x and y are taking on all values and that gives me the plane through z equal 10. This drawing shows famous coordinate planes. Okay, here, x, y, and z is showing a point right here, but 
the plane here that's perpendicular appears to be perpendicular to the x-axis. I'm kind of confused by it. No, I can see it now. It's perpendicular to the x-axis and goes through y and the z-axis. That's the yz plane. And that's specified by x equals 0. If I look at this horizontal plane through the origin, that would be z equals 0. And the plane here that's perpendicular to the y-axis, which would be this one, would be x equals 0. Now let's look at the other coordinate systems. This is cylindrical coordinates, except they like to use phi there, and just to be consistent with the notes, I'll call that theta. So here's our, <laughs> and these rho, where I usually use r, I kind of take these pictures um, from scanning and from the internet because I don't have good uh, capability to graph in 3D. 2D I can do, um, I have software for that, but the software that I have, that DL plot or D plot that I use, doesn't have good 3D graphing capabilities. I wrote to the developer, he said he's working on it. So here's our cylindrical coordinate system. Some value for r, a value for theta, the azimuthal angle theta, and a value for z. Now to specify a point, I have to specify all three of those values. For example, the radius could be 1, in that case theta might be uh, maybe pi over 4, and z is, say, 6. Now what happens if I constrain r, let's say r equal 1? Well, if r is 1, that means the radius always has to be 1, but theta can take on any values, so theta could take on all the values all the way around here. I've drawn a circle. And z can take on all values. This is a cylinder. Okay, Cylinder of radius 1. If I had r equals 5, that's a cylinder of radius 5. What if I constrain R? I'll say, oops, 2 is less than or equal to R, which is less than or equal to, we'll just say 3. Okay, then again, this is R and this is theta. That means R might come out here and we'll say that's 2. And here is 3. So R takes on all these values between 2 and 3, but theta is taking on all the values all around the circle and it's also taking on all these values. So I end up here just looking in the xy plane with a washer, but z can take on all values. And so what I end, well, so it's not very good values. There's z and here's z. Okay, so what I have is a thick walled cylinder. The inner radius is two and the outer radius is 3. So if I just have, say, r equals 5, that's just a cylind cylindrical shell. It's a, a radius 5. But now this, uh, this cylinder, between 2 and 3, has a thickness of 1 in its wall. You see r is varying between 2 and 3, but z is carrying that all the way around, and, I mean, sorry, theta carries it all the way around, and z carries it, of course, up as well as down. Now let's constrain theta. If theta is equal to, let's just say pi over 4, then the angle has to be here, but the radius can be anything it wants. It could be all the way into 0, and along this line it could go all the way out. And then your z isn't constrained, so z can be all the real numbers shown right there, and also out here. So if we connect up all these possibilities, we end up with a half plane. That's supposed to be half there. Half plane, right. If theta was constrained to, let's say, pi over 2, this is theta. Theta is measured with respect to the x-axis, so theta would be constrained right over here. 
but r could take on any values. And this is the half plane. It's the positive half of the xz plane. So you get half planes by specifying the angle. If you specify only the angle, you get a half plane. If you specify only the radius, you get some kind of cylinder. This is in cylindrical coordinates. Now let's look at spherical coordinates. I'm going to have to change the lettering again. It's phi and rho. Okay, so it's rho, phi for the azimuthal angle, I mean uh, for the zenith angle coming off the z-axis, and theta for the angle in the xy plane. So that's our ordered pair in spherical coordinates. To specify this point, I have to specify all of them. 1, let's say pi over 4, and phi of pi over 3. It would mean the length of this vector out to the point is 1. The angle off of the x-axis is pi over 2. Well, I better say pi over 4. We'll look at all like this picture. And phi, coming down off the z-axis, we'll say that's pi over 3, and that would give me that point. And now we have to look at what happens when we have an equation in which not all of these are specified. This must be rho. Fix them up. Theta. And this is phi up here. Okay. So if I specify rho, and the constraint rho, let's say, to be 5, then that means rho has to be 5, the distance from each point on this on the object to the origin is 5. It's 5 over here, it's 5 here, it's 5 here, because the theta can take on all values, so this would be all the way wrapped around here in this direction, and phi can take on all values, so you're starting here and going all the way down. All right, now I made a total mess of this picture, and I'm sure you could do a better job, but what you end up with when phi equals constant, I'm, I'm sorry, when rho is constant, you end up with a sphere. Okay, because the radius of all the points has to be the same distance to the origin, but theta takes on all values, phi takes on all values. Now if you want a sphere, um, a ball like a, that's solid, perhaps you could say r is less than or equal to 10. That's a ball of radius 10, but it includes all of the radius radii down towards the center, and so this is a solid. And if you want a sphere that um, has a thick wall to it, okay, this is a sphere centered at the origin. It has um, the inner radius is 7, the outer radius is 12, so it's a thick walled sphere. The width of the wall is 5. Now let's look at what happens when phi is a constant. Okay. Let's just set phi equal to pi over 4. We'll say that's pi over 4. R can take on all values. It could be way down here at 0. It could be up here as far as you want it to go. And theta takes on all values. I actually drew that one okay. It's a cone. This is a question on homework 1b. What happens? Um, okay, look at the limits. We have rho, phi, and theta. And theta varies between 0 and 2 pi. But phi only varies between 0 and pi. What would happen if you let phi vary between 0 and 2 pi. Well, because it varies only from here down to here, and theta goes all the way around, you've got all the points covered. For example, if you're here, this value of theta and, and a value of phi that's between 0 and pi will give you this point. If you let phi 
circle here and all the way around you will have double covered half of the points on the sphere. So if you if you want to let phi vary from 0 to 2 pi, you better constrain theta. So the point is, if you, you just kind of look at it, you'll see that you'll be double counting points if you let both of the angles vary between 0 and 2 pi.